Today we're going to talk about IT band syndrome itis or IT band leg syndrome or whatever it is that people like to call it. Um, it doesn't really mean anything, it's just a diagnosis, but what we really want to get down to is the bare bones of what is it that's causing my knee pain out here on the outside, right? Okay, details. You could get into the, the IT band originates here at the, uh, the gluteus maximus, uh, ties into it, the medius minimus, and then the, the TFL, that tensor fascia lata, big uh, abductor muscle here on the leg, helps you uh, bring, uh, stabilize your pelvis. Um, but they tie into that IT band and it comes down and, and it, uh, it attaches into the, the, la the what is it, the lateral aspect of the femur, and then it also attaches down here uh, below the uh, knee joint line at the, um, <clears throat> at the uh, I think it's the lateral tibial plateau. Um, so when that band gets really stiff and gets really uh, interconnected and intertwined with the, uh, the tissues of the, of the hamstring and of the vastus lateralis here and, and then also up here and um, <clears throat> in the, uh, the flexor rod and, and the gluteus maximus medius, um, then it's not moving as well as it should and, and that can cause um, some, uh, some friction uh, where it crosses uh, bony prominences such as the um, lateral femoral epicondyle um, and that is what people like to call IT band syndrome. But what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to try and loosen some of those, those cobwebs or, or, or connections that are happening um, uh, at the interfaces of the hamstring and the IT band and the, the vastus lateralis in the IT band and, um, <clears throat> and then also up here at the glute and the TFL because we can't change the actual length of the IT band itself. It's too thick, it's too stiff, it's too resilient um, and we want it to be that way because it has a tough job but um, what we can do is uh, we can loosen up those uh, those adjacent tissues that it gets adhered to, and that's going to help your leg function better. Actually, this is something called the uh, the lateral line, and, and that actually goes all the way from underneath your foot, all the way up the side of your calf, up the IT band, up the the lateral part of your rib cage, and then up into the neck area. And if any part of that lateral line gets tight, it can screw things up down up or downstream. So uh, so kind of explore your body and feel where you feel tight along that lateral line and you might hunt out some spots that will actually uh, free up some tissue, um, like I said, downstream and help you be able to run better. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, use a little cross ball rather than the foam roller to try and get in between these tissue interfaces, right? So I'm going to take my ball, I'm going to put it right there. That's actually, I like to go on the on the, uh, the hamstring kind of IT band interface. And I'm going to get that lacrosse ball on there and then kind of just let that thing sink in and believe it or not it takes quite a bit of time for that, that ball to get down to where you want it um, and you'll know because it's going to hurt but don't cry it's going to be okay all right if you want to get rid of this other pain then you're just going to have to suck it up a little bit and uh, give yourself the good kind of pain that counts. All right. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just pumping my foot up and down because we know that that lateral line is connected all the way down. So if I pin the tissue down up here and kind of oscillate my foot up and down, that's going to help create some movement, okay, and help break some of those, those adhesions there, okay. So I want you to spend about five minutes on... Uh, maybe about a two or three inch uh, long uh, spot on that upper thigh there, okay? Um, you can also do is give me here on that flexor rod, right? Because that area gets super stiff. You get that cross ball on there and come over on top of the ball there. And you can do contract relax, squeezing for five, four, three, two, one, and relax and let that ball sink in. Again, we can do some knee flexion extension, some of that oscillation, <clears throat> completely up to you. And you can do some internal external rotation. One of the movement limitations that people tend to get 
when they get this IT band syndrome, it's because they're hanging out in a position like this, right? <laughs> their, uh, their tissues, that, that lateral line's gotten super stiff. Maybe their foot's turned out, the knee's all valgus. And um, now they've got this bow stringing effect where this would be the bow and the bow string is really tight, right? So you want to try and loosen that bow string. Um, so what you would want to do then, after you've loosened some of that tissue, is you want to try and follow that up with some, uh, whoa, what was that? <laughs> um, you want to follow that up with some, uh, some sort of, uh, like stretching. There's a ghost. <laughs> um, some sort of mobilization, uh, like, for example, we get into a position that catches that same area. If we kind of like to get in this deep uh, flexion external rotation mode, but we're going to get on the side of the foot here kind of trap that foot down and then push that knee out just like that and you're going to feel like a spike being driven into the back of your hip, okay? And that's a good thing. So you can come down and try and bring your chest toward your foot and uh, oscillate back and forth there. You can oscillate, turn the other direction, push the knee down, oscillate that way a little bit. Spend about three or four minutes on that one as well, okay? Um, another thing you're going to want to do is try and cultivate the opposite position of, of this crappy position here, right? So if, if that's what's happening when we're standing in this extended position, we want to try and get some internal rotation um, and try and work on those bits and pieces in front of the hip there that, um, that get stuck from a, a sitting for a long periods of time, right? So that would be maybe getting into this uh, uh, half kneeling position. Maybe, all right, what's happening over here? <laughs> There we go. So maybe, maybe we get this half kneeling position and um, get your trusty kettlebell, hook your foot around that, all right? And then you want to try and um, create some internal rotation. So my hips are pointed straight. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze my butt. I can already feel that tissue start to open up there. And then I'm just going to translate my hips forward until I feel like I'm in a good spot. Then I can contract, relax for five seconds four, five, and relax, and that lets me go a little bit further, and that's gonna get some of that anterior, uh, that abdominal uh, sling mechanism there, those deep uh, hip flexors, and that deep, uh, that anterior part of the hip capsule, which is gonna really help open up your hip and get you in a better position, especially when you're, when you're running, um, so that you're not flailing your leg, you're going to extension, that you're not dumping off that torque, and, and letting your leg go like that. You want that leg to be able to come straight back, pull it straight forward. You want that roundabout way of uh, doing things because that's going to waste energy and uh, it's not going to improve your um, your hell in time, okay? So try that stuff out. Um, maybe you do those hip mobs. Uh, I'd say try and do it. If you do not, don't have a band, do that for about five minutes. If you have a band, you can do it for two or three minutes, okay? Um, any questions? Uh, I'll see you tomorrow.